Hello, everybody. So this time we have a cylinder um, that is moving with metallization M along, as you can see, this arrow that I made. And it's moving a velocity V through a ring that is slightly larger than the um, than the solenoid of our sorry of so larger than our rod or a cylinder. So we can imagine that the radius of this ring is going to be equals to b, and b is equals to a plus da. It's slightly larger. So we can imagine that b proportionally equals to a. Now, we have to find out what is the EMF inside our ring. Well, first of all, when we have our cylinder very far from the ring, the magnetic field does not really get to the ring. So at the beginning, if we try it, the flux going through our ring is approximately zero. So we can say this is zero, approximately. Um, and then, as we get closer and closer, it increases until we are at this point here, where the cinder just entered the um, just entered the ring. So you can say it reaches the top, a maximum here, where it reached where the the ring just entered, and then while it's inside and it's moving, the flux does not change. Put the same organization along, so we can say that this one stays constant, and then. Once it's about to go out, it decreases again, going to zero, because again, it gets farther away. So it goes like this. So this is the flux, and over time. Now though, <clears throat> what is the flux? Well, the flux, actually, what is the magnetic field? B is equal to, since we have a magnetization, it's gonna be equal to mu naught magnetization, time magnetization. And we said that the flux, is equals to the magnetic field times the area. And we said the area is about A, or B, which is equals to A, Z. So it's gonna be equals to mu naught times magnetization, the down change based on the area, times the A. So we have mu naught times M times pi times A squared. And then we said, what is EMF? Well, EMF, is equals to negative d of flux over dt. So now, if we start looking at it, here in the center, the flux does not change. So we're gonna have a flat, or sorry, we're gonna, yeah, well, we can say flat at zero. We're gonna have a line at zero over EMF at this point here that I'm gonna Say it's over here, the one is over here. So in between these two, I have zero, because of course d, d over dt is equal to zero. Then we have a certain value before and after. That is, at first it's increasing, so it goes up, and then it goes down very fast right here. So you have something like this. So it goes up fast, and then down all of a sudden. And then here again, on the other side, we have, actually, sorry, I, I'm being mistaken. It goes up, so negative, because we, we have a negative in front of here, so we have to do the opposite. We have something like this again, and then down. Then here, the other side, instead, it goes down and then up, so negative, up and then down. Here, instead, it's our EMF over T. And as you can see, it makes sense with the previous graph that we made. So I'm just gonna add a little bit to it. We can, as I said before in a previous video, we can say that the EMF is created only to absorb, or sorry, abhors a change. So it's always gonna create something that is gonna try to be against a change.
you can think of it as uh, change does nature does not want to change so it does everything you can do in order to keep things constant even that means even though that means creating something more as long as that thing will create something that affects the fruit okay so we'll, no, let me start video so as long as we manage to keep a flux constant a net flux constant nature will create another current that will do that and that's okay we don't it's not like creating something out of nowhere nature wants to keep things um, the same over time and that's what this um, this this means